I have a question regarding isolation movements and compound movements. So if someone is doing isolation movement, is there benefits with doing compound movement as well within the session? Okay, the first thing that has to be understood is that um, a muscle that's working, whatever muscle it happens to be, bicep, tricep, pectoral, whatever it happens to be, has a job to do. And it doesn't know whether it's working all by itself during an isolation exercise, or whether at the same time another muscle over there or over there is, is doing something else. It has its job to do and that's all it cares about. So the idea that the benefit that a muscle would get from a compound movement being somehow different, um, better or worse, than the benefit it would achieve by doing work isolation is, is a mistake, right? Now, you might say that it saves time to do a compound exercise because you're working, let's say, three muscles at one time. But the only way that would make sense is if each of those three muscles that are working are working as well as they would be working if they were working in isolation. If that were true, then it would in fact be a time saving. But the question should be, are you willing to work one third as long and get half as much benefit on each of those contributing participating muscles? Now it's a little different, right? To someone who says, wait a minute, I'd rather get full benefit, even if it takes me a little more time. All right, well, then you want isolation. Now, here's the other thing is that most compound exercises, as much as, as people think they're beneficial, are compromised, right? Because when you're doing an exercise, let's say parallel bar dips, or squats, or clean and jerk, or power cleans, or a number of other exercises, if you look at the joint that's moving and you look at the range of motion that each muscle is doing and you look at the resistance curve that each muscle is doing, you'll discover that all of those movements, all of those muscles, all of those joints are doing something a little or a lot less ideal than they would do in isolation. Which means that there's going to be not only reduced benefit, but possible risk of injury and wasted effort, wasted energy. So as just one quick example, if you're doing like barbell squats, right, engagement of the muscles that extend the hip at the same time that you're engaging the muscles that extend the knee creates a neurological interference such that one sort of cancels out the other a little bit, right? Each muscle is there compromised. Part of the quadricep is compromised. Part of the gluteus is compromised. Part of the hamstring is compromised because of a, of a thing called reciprocal innervation, which is a central nervous system trigger. So one of the reasons why people hate squats so much is because they're really hard. And they're really hard in part because of this neurological interference. They would be better off separating those joint functions and getting full benefit. Would it take a little longer? It would take a little longer, yes, but you get maximum benefit, minimum risk. So, you know, to do compound and isolation in one, at the best would be called redundant. It's more of the same. At worst, it's just unnecessary waste of time. You're better off focusing on the isolation exercise. Now, the only exception to that would be if you are a football player or if you play a sport that requires a particular movement that is very similar to a compound exercise, then there will be a type of learning of the movement, a type of coordination of the movement that you can cross over to the sport. What about if he's a football player and they do these isolation uh, exercises plus the, the movement itself that they do in the football, they repeat it and repeat it. Is there a benefit like that? Well, yes, exactly right. Now, the strength that you each individual, each individual muscle gets during an isolation exercise is as good as the strength it would gain in a compound exercise, which means that if you were to use that muscle in a compound movement on the field, it will perform just as well, if not better, than it would have if you'd done a compound exercise to strengthen those muscles. A stronger muscle is a stronger muscle, and it's going to work together with other muscles anytime it needs to work. It doesn't have to be trained that way in order to work that way. Um, but if you were training for a particular sport, the best thing you can do is isolation exercises and then skill training 
rather than trying to do a resistance exercise that then mimics. So it's not the opposite. Right. Right. You're better off doing the skill. Like if you're a tennis player or if you're a shot putter or whatever, you need to, you know, do the skill movements, the, the, the coordination movements, the learning of that, of the, you know, gy gyroscopics of that movement. And then you can get the strengthening done much more efficiently, much more safely by way of isolation exercises. All right. Thank you very My much. My pleasure.